former Vice President Joseph Boakai will be inaugurated today, Monday, as the 25th President of Liberia. Boakai defeated President George Weah in a close November 2023 runoff election. Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, U.S. Representative to the United Nations, is in Monrovia as head of the U.S. delegation. Meanwhile, President Weah delivered his final speech to the nation Sunday night. My fellow Liberians, as I speak to you tonight on the eve of another consequential political transitions in recent history of our beloved nation, I am filled with a profound sense of gratitude and humility. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your president and commander-in-chief for the past six years. Together, in 2018, we embarked on a journey to build a united, peaceful, and prosperous Liberia. And I am deeply thankful for the trust and support you have bestowed upon me and my administration during my tenure. As we navigate the complexity of governance, your partnership was instrumental in the development and implementation of policies and programs that aim to bring progress and development to our great nation. Reflecting on the accomplishment of these six years, let me tell you that I am proud of what we have achieved together. We have built roads, supported free wise and free tuition at high schools and public universities, stabilized the macroeconomy challenges we faced in 2018, built hundreds of pro poor housing units and achieved on so many fronts that we are able to list here today. However, I acknowledge that there is always room for improvement and perhaps more could have been done on a different circumstances. Regrettably, some of the long-term projects we initiated did not reach completion during my tenure. I am hopeful that the incoming administration will carry the touch forward and bring this initiative to fruition for the benefit of all Liberians, federal compatriots, Romans, and misinformation have played a large part in our politics over the last six years. It is my hope we as a country will overcome this challenge over the next six years. To begin this, we must start with the facts of the transition. I must report to you that we are living behind a better economy than we inherited. Today, President-elect Joseph Nima Buaka will inherit a stronger economy than I inherited. There is a big, bigger net international reserve position that was handed me in 2018. I inherited $94,999,000 United States dollars in net international reserves. And I am handing over to the next administration a net international reserve position of $222,700,000 United States dollars. That was outgoing Liberian President George Weir delivering his final speech to the nation Sunday night. Reporter Rita Jalabuidua in Monrovia spoke with some Liberians about their expectations for incoming President Joseph Boakai, who will be inaugurated today, Monday. The election results shows that the country is certainly divided. And for me, one of my expectations is that the very first engagement of the Boakai-led government should be about reconciling the country. And by reconciling the country means that uh, 
the people here were appointing government to have a broad based representation of all. The Liberian women are very disappointed. They have experienced a series of broken promises since 2005. So we hope that the government of President Boata will be able to commit and deliver on its obligations to regional and international instruments and to the Liberian women to promote legal and policy reforms. The first thing I want for Joseph Boata to do for us, Joseph Boata should face the role for us. The road condition is stopping us from going to our homes. Number two, we need jobs. I'm begging him to at least help the college students that are graduating. When they graduate, they will go back and push Wibaro. It is not good for us to see our children like that. The last one, let him help us to see about our husband that working there as civil servant. Their salary should be on time. Just we were defeated because of our governance and corruption. You could see that the corruption were all over the place, and he being a president, he was not speaking to all of these things. So we hopeful that this uh, coming government of Joseph Walker, we believe in him, and we know that he going to do better. Our people going to get job. The civil servant going to get good pay. Our teachers going to be happy. Our nurses going to be happy. These are things that were lacking in the past government. The thing I really want for it to be improved in the country here, yeah? the trust business, they put that working so they trust they were there, they real hold and good so they were able to do good work. Our children spoil. Then they put stop to a for a coming in the country here. Yeah? The other thing again, wow, making me to feel bad that they press control, no press control. Everybody get their own press. That Joseph Baga tried to help us. Chinese Vice Premier Louis Gohong called for unity among countries in the South and vowed to conduct deeper cooperation between each other. Speaking at meeting of the Third South Summit of the Group of 77 and China, we said the corrective rise of countries in the south is unstoppable, but the impact of the old international economic and political order remains. We say that China is willing to work with countries in the south in a wider scope and in more areas. The group of 77 plus China, G77 plus China, are gathering in Kampala, Uganda this year for a summit that aims to promote solidarity and complementarity of countries in the South. The meeting of this G77 plus China is the largest coordination group of countries within the United Nations framework. The forum is currently made up of 134 member countries. Although it remains its identity, it maintains its identity as G77 plus China, which was its initial number and represents 80% of the world's population. It is considered a powerful mechanism within the United Nations framework since it was founded in 1964.